Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Think you're going to go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know today, you know, one of the big releases is Thor Ragnarok. And I know there's a number of different, you know, retail exclusive editions of that one today. I know Target has one. I don't know for sure if Walmart has one, but I know for sure uh, Best Buy has the Steelbook. Hopefully they're actually, you know, in. Because uh, last Tuesday when I went out to show the Coco editions, those ones were totally gone. I'm leaving a little earlier today, but I have a feeling the Best by Steelbook one, that one's definitely going to be gone. The Marvel Steelbooks I've noticed though, those ones always go super, super fast, but we shall see. Also, uh, Lady Bird released today, and there's a couple other things that came out. Also, uh, you know, the first Tuesday of every month, uh, Walmart always changes out the actual section. They get in like some indie horror movies and some indie films and stuff like that, so definitely look forward to seeing, you know, what new stuff Walmart had put out today. And also, the end of this video is going to be some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. But anyway though guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And I just walked in the front where, you know, they put the new some of the new releases in the front of the store and I didn't see any of those Thor. I think it's like a Thor like book edition here that has like a book with it, but I didn't see any of them. We'll see if in the actual section they have some of them left. But like I said, I am a lot earlier today though. But I see the standee here, and actually, it looks like they have some of them still here. Because uh, like I said last week, the Coco one was totally gone. This one here has a 40-page gallery book in here in this exclusive edition. It also has the exclusive different cover. And I actually like this cover a lot more. This one is still cool, but I like this image a lot more. Here's a look at the back of this one. And this edition here that comes with the book, that one is, um, you know, uh, $27.99. And then the standard Blu-ray is uh, $24.99. I don't think, though, their edition, you know, they have any editions of their one that, are, you know, include the 4K. And then let's see if they, I don't actually see any of the 4K ones out for uh, Ragnarok. Yeah, I don't see any ones at all. And the actual section, let's see. Oh no, in the actual section they do have uh, Thor Ragnarok, the 4K. The 4K one is $29.99 for that one. Other than that, the only other new releases that I see in here, I actually don't see Lady Bird in here, which is kind of funny. Like, I don't know, maybe that was down, no, no, I don't see that one at all here. Um, that's kind of weird, because I would have thought that one would have been, you know, in the front. Only other ones I see was um, this one called Scorched Earth. And then Wonder Wheel, which this one got really, really negative reviews. It's a Woody Allen one. They only seem to have the DVD edition. But I kind of like this one. It, it had some kind of weird effects to it a little bit that he was doing, like some kind of green screen kind of look to it. And he made the movie like have this really super bright color to it. But I kind of liked it. Some of the acting like... Like the beginning of the movie, it started off kind of odd, but as it went along, it was a little more interesting. And I always really liked, uh, you know, uh, uh, Juno Temple, but I believe the Blu-ray of this is only going to be like $14.99 at Best Buy, but that's one of those ones I feel like down the line will be really, really cheap. Other than that, though, uh, one of the other things that released today is uh, Blue Planet 2, and they have uh, an exclusive edition of the uh, Blu-ray, and that one's $39.99 for the exclusive one. And includes like um, exclusive art cards in this one. And you know, Hans Zimmer uh, did the music in this one as well. I said the wrong name when I talked about this last week. And they also, like I said, have the 4K one. That one's $49.99 for the 4K. And this is like a weird uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm thing here. Did this one just come out? To, oh yeah, I guess this one released today. I didn't even know that. I, f I totally forgot about that. Uh, you know, the complete uh, ninth season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And I believe this one only came out on DVD. It's weird too, it doesn't have a slip cover because I feel like the HBO ones normally have slip covers. But I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure, like I said, this one only released on, um, on uh, DVD. No Blu-ray for that. Into Walmart we go. But in here, though, I don't see any exclusive editions of, uh, you know, Thor Ragnarok. The uh, 4K is $29.99 here. Other than that, though, they have, you know, a Blue Planet. And they have one here that has an exclusive, like, lenticular cover here that moves. You know, the, that's one of their only at Walmart ones. That one's $34.99 for that. And then they do have Lady Bird. It's weird that Target did not have that. I'm going to be talking about this one, though, at the end of this video. 
This is one of the other things that released today. The Dark Crystal, the 4K edition is $19.99 for this one. This one I had never, it's, I don't know if I ever actually watched this one for some weird reason. You know, I always, you know, watch the Labyrinth so often, but somehow I don't feel like I've ever actually seen that one. I don't know for sure, but I sort of feel like I, I've never seen that. But um, over here though, in the actual section, let's see, you know, what's new in here today. Like I said, this section always changes out the first Tuesday of every month. And uh, this one came out today called The Clapper. I'm going to be talking about this at the end of this video. I really, really like this movie. This was actually a really fun uh, Ed Helms movie. Uh, this one was today, this one that I know was nominated for Best uh, Animated Film, The Breadwinner, which I've not seen this one. If you guys have seen this, let me know how this one was. Other than that in here, though, uh, this one, I, I believe, was today, this one called Battleship Island. This one, like, I, I don't know much about this at all. Uh, the um, Immortal Demon Slayer was today. And then these ones here are empty, like... Man of Earth, though, that was like the sequel to The Man uh, from Earth. That came out. Uh, Scorched Earth, which they had this in Target. This one here called Hacked. Another one I don't know anything about. If you guys have seen any of these ones, let me know. Uh, and then The Curse of the Mayans. That one released today. That one's $9.96. I talked about that last week. This one released um, Saltwater Atomic Sh uh, Shark. And this one, um, you know, uh, Griff first, who directed uh, Ghost Shark, which I was in, he directed this one. Um, and it's got like, um, I believe it's uh, uh, David Fascino, Fascino, Fascino for, you know, from, who played Bud Bundy from uh, Mary Children is in that. The other one today was this movie called Annie. And I believe those are all of the main things in here new today. Oh, yeah, and then this one uh, with Mick Foley's in this movie called Choke Slam. But let's see over here down the TV because there's probably some TV stuff. Oh yeah, and they have Curb Your Enthusiasm, the complete ninth season as well. That one's $14.96. But other than that though, that seems to be all of the major things that are new today. And this past weekend, I saw two different movies. Uh, the first one I saw is the Death Wish remake, which is directed by Eli Roth. And I actually always really like Eli Roth movies. I know some people like, they're kind of like with his films, people either really like them or really dislike them. You know, of course my favorite though is always Cabin Fever and then probably Green Inferno. But this one though, you know, remake wise, they changed around a lot of the details, but it's essentially though about Bruce Willis's character who's, uh, you know, he's a doctor in this one. And his wife and daughter are attacked in a break-in, and his wife is killed, and his daughter is in a coma. And it's sort of him, well, after this happens, he's sort of, because of the way the police are not solving the case, he kind of starts to crack up a little bit, and he goes out and kind of becomes a vigilante and tries to track down the people that did this to his family. And it's like him kind of going around and, like, the crazy stuff that's going on. I actually kind of liked it, and, you know, I thought Bruce Willis did a pretty good job in this. Because Bruce Willis lately, you know, has been in lots and lots of indie movies and, like, some, like, direct to video kind of things and this film like performance wise I thought he actually did a pretty good job and it has that Eli Roth feel to the movie because it's like the, like the gore and like the crazy kind of over the topness to some of the scenes in it uh, the other one I saw was the Jennifer Lawrence movie uh, Red Sparrow and that one you know the trailers for that movie looked really cool so I was really interested in seeing it but honestly though the movie, though, was really, really slow. It had a similar feel, like the, the, the vibe of what was going on to um, Atomic Blonde, kind of. But it was like essentially about like um, Jennifer Lawrence's character gets kind of recruited in to this undercover agency, like the Red Sparrow agency, where it's like to seduce men and like, you know, get information from them and everything. And it was like her getting, you know, she, you kind of find out why she has to go into this group. But like the training stuff when she's in the actual Red Sparrow group kind of being trained is really, really quick. And like there's not a lot to it. And like I said, the movie just has this really, really slow, slow vibe to it. And it doesn't have a lot of action to it or anything. I don't know. I honestly, for some reason, couldn't really get into the movie at all. Um, if you guys saw that movie or, or um, Death Wish, though, let me know your thoughts on them or what movies you guys got to see this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go.
And in here though, they actually do have some of these uh, steel books in here for Thor. So it's actually cool to actually see some of these in. They actually have two different ones. They have the Blu-ray one, which is $27.99. And they also have a 4K edition of this one as well. I only see one of the 4K still. Over in the front though, they had an exclusive uh, steel book of uh, Blue Planet 2. And then um, they have uh, Wonder Wheel. Like I said, that one's only $14.99 here for the Blu-ray edition of that one. So that's a pretty cheap price for this one. Like I said, this one was okay. I kind of like some of it. It was a little strange, but it was kind of interesting. I feel like if it's already $14.99 down the line, this one will probably be like $9.99 and get to be a lot cheaper. But like I said, I kind of like this one a little bit. And I believe these ones are new. These steelbooks here are 13 hours, a triple X, the return of Xander Cage. I think this one might be new. I don't know for sure. But then they have these ones in here for Dark Crystal. And they have this one, which is like a new digi book for $12.99. And then they have also have the exclusive, uh, you know, a 4K steelbook here of that one. And that one's uh, $24.99 here. So anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here from Shout Factory from the Shout Select line is the brand new collector's edition of the Joe Dante film, The Burbs. This is one of those movies though I have watched so many times. You know, Joe Dante, you know, directed uh, Matinee with Shout Factory released as well, as well as The Howling, uh, the Gremlins movies. Always been a huge fan of the films that he's directed. But this movie though stars Tom Hanks it's basically about him, you know, uh, you know, kind of like on a vacation in his house, sort of trying to chill out. And it's about him and his neighbors, you know, start telling him about how the, the, the newer neighbors that have moved in, there's something really weird about the house at night. They're hearing, hearing weird noises. And Tom Hanks and the other neighbors kind of all become obsessed with this. Since Tom Hanks has all this time on his hands, they all are kind of becoming obsessed with these neighbors and thinking that something weird is going on. And they're seeing, like, I'm carrying something that looks like it could be a body. They're hearing all kinds of, like I said, weird noises from the basement, weird lights, all kinds of strange strange stuff going on and the neighbors too you never really see them too often and they're if you see them it's at night and they're kind of lurking around and just some really odd stuff going on and the house too is very creepy I, I believe the front of the house is actually the same house where they filmed the tv show the monsters because this was all filmed you know in the universal back lot but like i said this is one of those movies i have watched so many times this is a fun movie about them totally becoming obsessed with these neighbors thinking that something is up and them trying spying on them and trying to figure out what exactly is going on with these neighbors it has on here though a brand new 2017 uh, 2k scan of the film really great new transfer on this one as well as a commentary track on here with the writer. It has an extensive making of on here with you know, interviews with uh, the director, Corey Feldman, Courtney Gaines, a bunch of other people as well talking about the production, like really well uh, put together documentary on here, as well as an alternate ending, as well as the uh, work print version of the film, which has a bunch of different deleted scenes and stuff throughout the movie. But a really fun movie here and a great new transfer here on this release. The next one here is from Lionsgate. This movie, you know, was up for tons of different awards, uh, Golden Globes Academy Awards, and a whole bunch of different things. I'm filming this right before the awards, so I don't know for sure what it's won. But earlier in this video, when I was out in the stores, I'll say, if, you know, what it did or didn't win. Uh, but this one here is the Greta Gerwig film that she directed called Lady Bird, which stars, and I always say the name wrong, but I think I might know how to say it. It's like Cersei Ronan. I, th I, I think I'm saying it right now, finally. I don't know for sure. You kind of have to say it with an accent like Cersei. Saros Ronan. I think so. But the movie, though, is basically a coming-of-age movie, which, to me, kind of has a feel of, like, Juno mixed with the film Saved. It's got that kind of vibe. It's basically about, um, you know, uh, Saros Ronan's character, who is, you know, in school, and, like, her father recently lost his job, and it's kind of her, and she's in this kind of, um, religious school and she doesn't really totally agree with everything you know their views on everything and it's kind of her trying to come into her own um and it's essentially though it's also set i think it was set in 2003 i'm pretty sure and it was you know her in school and her, you know, going out on get it, trying to get a boyfriend and trying to deal with all the kind of stuff that's going on in school and all the kind of problems and everything. Like I said, it's a real coming of age movie, but it's so well put together, so well made, and a really, really good story. Really well acted, really well, you know, written, everything directed. Really great. It's like one of those things, though. It's like what you just kind of have to experience it because it's all about, like I said, a coming of age story about her character and just sort of what's going on in her life and like problems and stuff with her friends 
friends and you know are also the stuff going on at our home with her father and the all the kind of turmoil and things like that that are going on at our house but a really really good movie it has it on here though a commentary track on here with the director as well as a feature on here on the movie the next one here, and this is one I didn't know anything about, and this stars John Hawkes. Uh, Anthony Anderson is in this movie, uh, Clifton Cons Jr., Robert Forrester, Octavia Spencer. This is a movie here called Small Town Crime, and this movie, I was really surprised at this movie. This was a really, really good movie, and I really got into this movie, and it's pretty much, though, about uh, John Hawkes' character, you know, and he was in um, the, the sessions and... Um, a great character actor. He was also in Winter's Bone, a bunch of different films. But it's pretty much though about um, you know John Hawks, who was a cop, and something ended up happening, and he ended up being you know fired from the force, and he's now sort of like he has really bad alcohol problems. He's drinking all the time, and nothing really is going right for him. He's trying to get work, and he can't get hired, and he really wants to try and become a cop again. That's like his dream, but because of what had happened, he doesn't really think it's ever going to happen again. But one day he finds this girl when he's driving home on the side of the road, and she's like really badly injured and he takes her to the hospital but she ends up dying and he becomes like obsessed with trying to figure out you know what happened to this girl and you know how she was because she was really badly beaten up and everything and it's sort of him trying to redeem himself and for what had ha what he did while he was a cop and what had happened and it's like his goal no matter what to try and track down what happened to this girl and like this girl had dealt with things I, I don't want to say too much about the movie but it's essentially though a really really well put together movie about him just sort of trying to figure out what happened to this girl and like kind of and the, and the you know the cops too that he used to work with are saying now you got to stay out of this you know this is not you're you're not you're not a cop anymore you shouldn't be doing this and he's just sort of like no no no, no I'm, not, I'm not i'm not doing anything but he's kind of like you know, he has the girl's phone, so he's trying to, like, track down any leads he can get. And it's, like I said, it's all set, too, since it's called Small Town Crime. It is in a small, small town, and it's just him trying to get to the bottom of everything. But I really got into this movie. It has a bunch of features on here. It has deleted scenes, extended scenes, um, some character profiles on here, a commentary track, a director's, uh, you know, a technical commentary track, an actor-producer commentary track. So lots and lots of features on here. But definitely, guys, give this one a chance. Really was surprised with this. The next one here is the complete uh, third season. This is from Lionsgate as well. The complete third season of, um, you know, AMC's Fear of the Walking Dead. And I believe, yeah, the, the fourth season of this will come, be coming back in April. This is actually a pretty interesting show because it, like, it was sort of, like, started as kind of a prequel to The Walking Dead a little bit. Because the first season was, like, about a family who was kind of on the run. And they got along with a couple other people that kind of came along from, you know, when the zombie outbreak first begins. And the second season was a lot of them on the water trying to find where is, like, a safe place to go. And then it deals with them in a hotel. And this season, though, is pretty much about the family is now kind of separated at the beginning of the show. And they get taken in by... Um, like some of them get taken in by this really like strange army group that's kind of like doing experiments and stuff. Sort of has a Day of the Dead kind of vibe, and it's kind of sort of what they're up to in there. And they're kind of like the kind of weird kind of like army guys that are kind of up to no good in there. Because everyone's sort of starting to like because of what's happening, they're sort of like not trusting anybody, and they're all kind of up to no good. Some of them, and it's pretty much though about them getting taken in and sort of like finding finding where each other are because they got separated. And it's kind of sort of them though getting separated again right away in the beginning, and then they're kind of like trying to find each other again and it's sort of like all the kind of problems in the world with these zombies and everything but you know that's essentially what it is it's you know like i said it's a zombie show but actually really really pretty well put together show and some really you know good zombie gore and all that kind of stuff as well on this but it has on here though deleted and extended scenes as well as commentary tracks on this one like i said this is the complete third season of the show but it's hard to explain because i have not seen like all the episodes of the show i've only seen selected episodes here and there but this season though from what i've watched of it is really pretty cool though the next one here is from Lionsgate as well, and this is a movie here called uh, Monsters at Large, and this has you know Miska Barton, Austin St. John, you know who's the I believe he's the Red Ranger in the original Power Rangers, and Stephen Tabalowski, you know who I've always been a fan of him, and he was in like um, Groundhog Day, uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mrs Hyde. That's a really great underrated movie. A bunch of different you know he's been in tons and tons of movies, but this is a movie here called Monsters at Large, and this surprisingly was such a fun movie and. 
And the monster was a like a total throwback because the monster was all done with like a puppet, like old fashioned like stop motion animation, a puppet as well as like a creature suit. Because like normally like a movie like this now quite often would be done like like 90% CGI, like the monster would all be CGI, but this was like a total throwback. And it's basically though about this um this kid who's like was types telling like ghost stories and stuff to his brother about the creatures and stuff and the little brother got like scared to death of that when he heard about this creature story and like you know was bothering the kid and wanted to sleep with him at night because he was scared and everything so he, the uh, the bro older brother and his friend have to come up with an idea of how they're going to you know you know make this brother think that there is no monster and try and like kind of cool him down after being so scared of everything so they kind of come up with this idea that they're going to create a like monster hunting group kind of like Ghostbusters where they kind of hunt down and trap and get rid of the monsters but it's pretty much though about them you know putting this group together and it's got like a real kind of like a kid like a Goonies mixed with Ghostbusters sort of feel to this and it's kind of like um but in school though they're having problems with Steven Chabowski who's the teacher and it's I don't know it's such a fun movie it's like surprised me with how well put together this movie was but it's essentially, though, there ends up being, and you, you know, this is no spoiler, there might be or there is or isn't a real monster that kind of comes and they have to deal with. And, well, you know, you kind of know that anyway because you see the monster in the cover. But it really is like, so cool how the monster itself, though, is such a throwback to, you know, a total old school kind of like 80s kind of vibe with the monster itself. But I would definitely recommend you guys check this out. It has on here as well a uh, Monster Lars, a behind the scenes look, which is kind of cool too because they show and talk about, you know, how they did the actual monster. And the next one here I got from uh, Entertainment One and Momentum Pictures. And this is a movie starring Ed Helms and Amanda Seyfried called The Clapper. This is another one that I really, really thought was a fun movie. It's about Ed Helms, and he's like a guy who goes and does like, um, kind of, he's always like, kind of like an extra in the background of like TV shows where they have like infomercials and stuff, and like he's always in the audience. Like if somebody's selling like, like something like the Slap Chop or something, he like is the guy who always like yells out something like, oh, so does it do this? And like, you know, that's sort of like his thing. And he ends up becoming it becomes known that he's always in the background of these shows or the guy who always like answers, asks the questions on the infomercials. And it, because he always wears like disguises and fake mustaches to try and look different, but he's always doing that. That's like his main job in life is like being in the, the extra or the audience member of all these infomercial kind of things. And he ends up getting kind of called out for this on this kind of talk show, like a Jimmy Kimmel kind of show. And the guy says, who is this guy? And then he puts clips of how he's in all these infomercials and says, we want to track this guy down. We want to have him on our show. We got to talk to the clapper. And it's pretty much though about them trying to figure out where he is, but this whole thing starts to kind of ruin his life. And Ed Helms, you know, the whole TV thing going on. And he's also, you know, starts to see and, you know, starts dating Amanda Seyfried's character who he's, you know, meets at this gas station. The thing that's kind of fun about this movie too is that, um, like, the background kind of characters as well as, like, some of the small characters are a lot of people, like, from, like, Tim and Eric and stuff. Like, um, the one guy who's on Hollywood is the one who's, like, on Tim and Eric's, like, um, you know, uh, check it out with Steve Brule. Um, in the background, I saw the guy who I found out recently passed away like a year or so back and I didn't even know who was in the Greasy Strangler who was like, you know, he was saying, I want that this dog isn't greasy enough. And he's like, sir, I could lose my license. That's illegal, sir. But he was in this. In the background, I saw him. I saw pretty sure Brown number one or Brown number two. If you guys saw, check it out. He was in the background. A bunch of different people. I don't know. That was a cool, fun thing to me, seeing all in the background. Like, a lot of people were really recognizable extras. Even the one guy who's like, um, considered like the world's greatest extra. He was in the background of this movie. There's also a lot of um, infomercial kind of people people in this as well but I love this movie this was a really funny movie to me and I, I actually thought this was a really good Ed Helms movie as well you know because some Ed Helms movies I like better than others but he was really really good in this same with Amanda Seyfried as you know his girlfriend but then there was a lot of turmoil going on with them because of all this stuff going on with the TV show. The next one here is from Entertainment One as well and it's a movie here called Iron Wolf this is about like in the um at a time of Nazis, there ends up being like these um, scientists, these Nazi scientists are doing these weird sort of experiments and they created this sort of weird wolf type creature that they have locked away in this bunker and they're always doing like these creepy experiments and stuff. But the one, uh, the wolf creature gets like locked away and behind this like huge door 
you know, locked away. And it's like years later, it's set in modern times. It's a group of these like, um, kind of like a rock band who is coming together to do like a concert in this like old abandoned kind of bunker uh, building. And if literally they know though that this creature is still locked inside this wall and it's, you know, there and it's pretty much them, you know, they are trying to plan out this big concert and their big reunion show. And of course, though, this creature ends up getting out and it's sort of like them getting killed off and attacked by this creature. It's a crazy movie, though. It's actually some pretty cool stuff in this movie, you know, creature effects and stuff in the movie. And, um. And like I said, it was like a like a rock band stuff though. And it's pretty much them trying to, like the one guy is having this like big reunion. So they have all these people like planning to come for like this big rave kind of party thing for this band. But a pretty interesting movie here. The next ones here are both from uh, Gravitas Ventures. This one here is a movie called Lost Creek. And this movie is basically though about this kid who just moved to a new house. I think he was I think he was always in the town. I couldn't tell for sure, but I know he moved to a new house because his mother like I believe she recently got divorced and like she moves to this new new house. And the kid always kind of cuts through the forest to get to school and to get to areas. And he meets this girl out in the forest and they kind of become friends. And there's something off about the girl, though, because she's always in the forest and never wants to leave or anything. And it's pretty much, though... Um, like the kid though, once he meets this girl, he starts to sort of see, have like weird, creepy dreams at night. And he sees like this sort of like a kind of a creature or something. And the girl too that he meets in the woods is always saying, you know, you gotta be careful. There's actually is a, a monster out in these woods. But it's a, it's like a kid's, um, I'd say it's probably like a PG, PG-13 kind of kid's horror movie. It sort of has like a vibe a little bit of like Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps. That's like the sort of vibe that it has. It was actually pretty good though, to be honest. Like, and it was like, you know, the kids at the school and like, um, kids are sort of going missing too. It's like, it's sort of all this sort of weird stuff. Cause the kid also is like, sometimes he's like, there's something weird about this neighborhood. Like I see the, in the house, the, the neighbors, they have all their food in there, but they're not there. And he's like, the kid is always sort of noticing that there's something kind of up with, with, with the neighborhood and sort of people going missing and stuff. But it's sort of just him trying to figure out what's going on. But honestly, a pretty fun, you know, kids horror movie. Uh, the next one here is from Garrett's Ventures as well. It's a movie called Downhill. It's about a, these group of these um, mountain bikers. In the beginning of the movie, these mountain bikers, they, this, two of them are a couple, and then their one friend, they're kind of racing down the trail, and the one friend gets into an accident and dies. And um, this is like a year or so later, the um, the one guy who was the friend, you know, who was out there as well with his girlfriend, they get invited to go out to do this like sort of expedition to kind of like um, sort of like getting sponsors and stuff for mountain bikers and they're kind of there to try and like get money and stuff like that and he kind of talks him into coming out and meeting him out in Chile for this expedition thing for the mountain bikers but it's essentially though about them going out there and the two of them go, the couple go out kind of uh, on the trail the one day but then then they end up you know discovering this guy who has this terrible like kind of like rash sort of thing on his face and then there's like you know he calls the one guy and says we need help out there something's going on this guy is injured but they end up out there sort of trapped because they're these these group of these weird hunters that are kind of up to no good out there that are kind of trying to attack them and come after them and shoot at them it's kind of sort of like a I got it's like a horror movie mixed with like a surviving the game kind of vibe to this movie it's got that sort of feel to the movie but it's like an intense movie though what happens though when they're out there and they're trying to also there's a lot of weird stuff going on like I said to the guy had this like weird rash thing going on his face and it it's got like a insane stuff that goes on like it kind of builds up to some crazy crazy stuff like at the end of this movie but a pretty interesting movie and a really cool setting as well this one here is from Paramount this is the um, the uh, CBS and Paramount. And this is the complete first season of the TV show The Good Fight. And I believe this show um, airs, and I might be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was like a CBS All Access, the thing that the new Star Trek airs on as well. And this is... um. This is like the follow-up to the show The Good Wife, you know, which lasted for a number of seasons. And this is about like a um, like a law firm that does like in-house, um, you know, um, court cases and stuff like that, and like kind of settles out of court. And um, the one um, woman's um, you know goddaughter kind of comes there to work there. But like, and right when she's getting ready to leave, the one main actress who is also in you know the movie uh, The Birdcage, and she's recently in Bad Mom's Christmas. But um, 
she's getting ready to leave, but it becomes this total uh, nightmare because right when she's about to leave, all of her money gets frozen because somebody that she had worked with was like, you know, and it was the one, um, the goddaughter's father was like said to be like stealing all this money, like like billions of dollars in investments, like a Bernie Madoff kind of situation. And it's kind of like this whole law firm is all messed up. And now she, her character has to kind of go and work with a smaller business. And it's kind of a whole terrible situation that's all going on with them. I, I Honestly, I watched a couple episodes of this. It was honestly kind of an interesting show. It has on here uh, deleted and extended scenes as well as a gag reel. I only saw a couple episodes of The Good Wife I remember seeing like at the gym. And I think, like I said, I think that recently just ended. And the next one here I got from um, Wellgo USA is uh, Kickboxer Retaliation, which is the newest in the Kickboxer series. This one connects directly to the last movie, which came out like a year or two back. And this is basically about this guy who in the last movie had to kind of defend what happened to his brother and he takes out this terrible like huge fighter and it's now he's like because of the person he took out and this this whole you know fighting underground fighting group now lost this guy they kind of force him to come back they kind of kidnap him the guy who did it who killed him and force him to come back and hold his girlfriend and like at ransom and say like you know your girlfriend is going to get killed if you don't come back and fight for us and he has to kind of train again and it's also um you know uh, mike tyson is in this movie as well um and it's essentially though like about him having to train again to fight this enormous guy he's like 400 pounds really huge guy and it's pretty much about him going through the whole thing about how he's having to train again and if you guys like these films though this series of films definitely check this one out it has on here though a making of you know a feature ad on here as well as a theatrical trailer the next one here is from Arrow Video. This one is an Arrow Video UK release, so it's a Region B release. So you guys have to have you know an all-region Blu-ray player or be in the uh, Region B region. And this one is um, a movie here called Hounds of Love. This is a really like out there movie, like a, the subject matter, what's going on and everything. But it's essentially though about this couple who are going, you know, it's set in the 80s, who are going and kidnapping these girls. And like they kidnap them if they're like hitchhiking or like ask directions or anything like that. And they get them back to their house and they like, you know, it's all kind of crazy stuff that's going on and bad stuff but they kind of kidnap them in there and then once the guy is done with them then he kills them and he's and then he goes and looks for the next girl and it's essentially about this girl who ends up going out one night to go to this party then the mother doesn't know that she snuck out and she ends up getting kidnapped by this group and it's about her trying to figure out how she's going to get out of here and also dealing with all these horrible things that are going on in this house there was a movie that came out recently called uh, Girl in a Box that kind of had a similar feel to this I don't know if this movie was based on that story somewhat or not I don't know for sure but because it was a similar sort of story a little bit um but it's essentially though about her and then like they force her to write this letter to her, to her mother and say that she ran away and she couldn't take the house and everything. So it's like the mother does seems like something is up and it's kind of her trying to work with the police and figure out where the daughter is. But actually really, really well made movie and has on here though uh, a bunch of new fe a bunch of features on here. It has some interviews on here. It has two short films from the director, a music video on this one. Like I said, a pretty interesting movie here. This one is one that I thought I never saw before. And then I watched it, I'm like, I saw this movie as a kid. And it stars uh, Dennis Quaid and Winona Ryder. It's a movie called um, Great Balls of Fire. And this is the story of Jerry Lee Lewis. And I was reading that some of it is like changed around a little bit. So it's not totally true, some of the facts and everything. But honestly, this is a pretty decent movie. But it's about uh, Dennis Quaid. And it's about like, you know, because he was the guy who, Dennis Quaid's character, you know, he plays Jerry Lee Lewis, was the one who wrote the big song, uh, Great Balls of Fire. But he kind of had like a really good start where like he was like looked like he was gonna almost be like Elvis but then like um he ended up you know marrying like his like second cousin Winona Ryder's character who was only 13 years old and he was like in his mid-20s so it was some really messed up stuff going on with this guy but he ended up marrying you know her and then that kind of ruined the career and this whole movie is sort of about how he meets Winona Ryder's character and their, their relationship. And like I said, it's really messed up the stuff going on in this. Like, you know, but you know, Winona Ryder though, I think she did this like right around the same time that she did Beetlejuice and like Heathers. It was around that exact same time. But honestly though, it was a pretty decent movie. Like I, I, I like I said, I, I remembered seeing this one years back, but like I said, I was probably like seven years old or something when I saw this movie. But I like this movie though, honestly. It was actually a pretty decent movie and I like, I didn't really 
I always knew that one song, but I kind of, I didn't know all the kind of the messed up stuff because, like I said, I really didn't remember the movie. I only saw it like I was maybe seven years old. The next one here, I got um, the director and writer sent a copy of this one to me. And it's a movie that they made called Welcome to the Wilts. And it's, this cover, though, this is the main cover. This is like the alternate cover, but they signed it, which is pretty cool. But this movie, I really like the cast of this movie because um, Thomas Decker's in this movie, uh, Rory Calkin, you know, and, and he also was in Thomas Decker's movie that he directed called Jack Goes Home. And the one actor in this as well was in that movie called King Cobra, which I really love that movie. That was a really cool movie. But this... um. It's basically though about a group of these friends who are going out to kind of like hang out and party in this kind of area in the middle of nowhere. And they go onto this land where they're like told not to go because of signs and everything. And the guy who owns this land is this crazy like alien conspiracy kind of guy. He's like having all these kind of weird dreams about aliens at night and like obsessed with aliens. And he's growing like, you know, marijuana and stuff on his land. And But it's essentially though about these kids that are going out there like kind of camping on his land. And it's sort of like what ends up happening with them going out there. It's not good. It's got a real throwback kind of like 80s style vibe to this movie really really dug this movie really really fun movie um uh, Dolph Lundgren has a part in this movie as well this has on here though a uh, welcome to the wilts which is like a short proof of con uh, you know um, uh, concept film as well on this this one here is from PBS, and this is a pretty cool set of um, Mr. Rogers. This is Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, neighborhood, and it's a collection that has 30 episodes from from the you know the series that went from you know, and all the episodes are from 1979 to 2001. So there's been like some random episodes like released in the past, but this is a really extensive set in here. And, like it has like you know also an episode guide inside about you know the episodes that are on here, and it's a four disc set. But this is a show that I always watched as a kid. You know, um, if you guys don't know, it's based, you know, Mr. Rogers. It's pretty much just him. And he kind of like, you know, kind of talks to people like doctors and all these different kind of like people's professions and stuff. And he also has like Puppet Land where there's like the talking puppets in the train yard that he has and stuff. It's a really, I don't know, it's a show that's like a fun throwback to watch this again because I haven't really seen a lot of these in a long time. But one of those ones that I always watched as a kid. It also has the original series premiere episode of this that was in black and white. And the next one I got here from Hanover House is Blood Feast. This one is the remake of the, you know, the Herschel Gordon Lewis film. It's a really fun movie. And then that, the movie uh, Blood Diner was sort of like a remake of Blood Feast as well. It had a similar, very similar kind of vibe and a kind of the same comedic feel. This one is basically, though, about an American family who is living in France and they, you know, went there to open up this American style diner. And, you know, business is not doing well. They're really not making any money. So the husband, he has to end up working at this, um, you know, museum at night. And he's kind of like in the Egyptian kind of section of the museum. It's pretty much about him being like obsessed and drawn to this statue of this Egyptian goddess. And it's sort of him drawn to her and he's the statue is sort of like making him do things and he's at night he's going out and like killing people and there's like crazy deaths and stuff in there and he's like you know you know so, starting to eat the people and like serving them the people you know, in on the diner the food and all kinds of really weird stuff going on and it's like him trying to prepare this you know this blood feast of like humans you know to try and like bring back the goddess that he's like obsessed with at the museum it's a pretty interesting like i said it's a remake but it's got some a couple different kind of things to it uh caroline williams is in this movie you know who played stretch in uh texas chainsaw massacre 2 and she's been in lots and lots of different movies hatchet 3 uh, Sophie Monk is in this movie. It's actually a really fun movie. This one here, though, is only the R-rated cut of the movie. I know they're going to be doing some screenings of the uncut edition. And I don't know if down the line there's going to be a uh, uncut Blu-ray of it as well. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Wild Eye Releasing, and it's a movie here called Apocalypse Road. This is a po you know, post-apocalyptic movie. It's about these two sisters who are kind of... um. You know, so, you know, survive through whatever what it was that happened to everyone, and they're kind of traveling around. And at this point, they're like in an area where it's going to get cold, and they know that they kind of need to get somewhere, you know, to survive. You know, where it's warmer because of you know, the winter is coming and everything. So it's them kind of traveling around, and you know, they don't have a ton of supplies, and like you know, but there's some dangerous kind of people here and there that they come across. It's not like zombies or anything, but it's like really bad, like violent people. And something ends up happening though, and the sisters end up getting separated. Separated, and the ones with this one guy, the other one gets taken by this bad like group of all these bad guys and stuff like that. They're attacking everybody like a crazy kind of group. It sort of sort of has like a uh, 
Mad Max kind of area that they she ends up in, sort of like that a little bit, but it's pretty much though about the sisters trying to her the one trying to get away, the other sister with this group that she found, and they're trying to help her get back and find where her sister is. But a pretty fun, you know, post-apocalyptic kind of, you know, and the thing is too, it did they did a really good job too with the abandoned settings, because you know sometimes you know. When it's like end of the world things. They can't find the greatest spots. But this one they actually found really good locations for showing like the total emptiness. Uh, the next one here is from Wild Eye Releasing as well. It's a movie here called uh, Blood Harvest. This one is basically though about this like sort of like deranged type killer that's like wearing this weird mask and stuff that's going and like sewing people's mouth shuts and like doing all this crazy stuff to them. And it's this cop who is like, you know, investigating the murder and trying to figure out, you know, these murders and figuring out what's going on. But he's talking to this police officer, you know, his, his, you know, his captain saying that he thinks that there could be some kind of a supernatural thing in this, this everything that these deaths, the things that are happening, how they're found seem really weird. And he says to the guy, he needs to be more open and like willing to accept this and of course he gets fired because of this you know because he argues with him and it's months later and these killings are still happening and there's all these people you know everywhere are getting killed all kinds of like crazy you know it's like lots of different crazy deaths in this but it's essentially though at him you know, you know, when he's not supposed to, when he was already fired, trying to work with his old partner and try and figure out exactly, you know, who is behind these murders and if there is something supernatural or what's going on exactly with it. But actually a pretty crazy, like, slasher kind of, you know, movie, like, because the guy, too, he has all these different kind of looks and stuff that he's wearing when he's attacking the people. But it has on here, though, a making of documentary, commentary track, blooper reel, and trailers on this one. And the next one here is from Breaking Glass Pictures. And this one is kind of hard to explain a little bit. It's like a a girl who um, finds out she's pregnant and then she um it's kind of like at the doctor's office and she's like not so sure she wants to keep the baby so she's kind of you know questioning if she might have an abortion or not because she's not 100% certain but she starts having like really weird trip you know trippy kind of visions and stuff while she's pregnant and it's kind of like um it sort of has like the vibe of something like Rosemary's Baby a little bit, but it's got like all these kind of really creepy visuals and stuff that she's seeing when she finds out she's pregnant and like kind of the people who are around her are kind of acting sort of strange and stuff in it. She's also sent to go out to this area to um, do like a news story on investigation of this area where like there was some weird disappearance of these kids and stuff. I'm pretty sure, unless I'm mixing up the details, but it, she goes out there to do this, but this is a really strange area. Like I said, it's a kind of interesting movie. It is, like I said, a little hard to explain though, but it has on here though, a thing about the director on here, as well as a director show reel and behind the scenes on this one. And the last one here, it's a movie from Indieplex Films called Pastor Paul. I love the cover on this. It's about a guy who goes to Africa on a trip, and he's out there kind of to try and like do the mathematics of like the drum beats, and he ends up getting approached by these guys out there who make like independent films. They need to find an actor who is Caucasian to play a ghost in the movie that they're making, and they couldn't like the guy they had like quit, and they can't he can't do it. So they see him, and like they go, oh, we want you to be in our movie, and he doesn't really seem very interested but they you know kind of talk him into it and he goes out there to be in this movie the stuff about the making of the movie was my favorite in this movie like the him going and trying to make this movie and it has like a it's a really super low budget movie and there's some really it's like the movie's done too kind of like a documentary a lot of it it has like a real like documentary sort of feel but he's out there kind of talking to the people and he's kind of not sure what he's doing and when he's doing this one scene the director keeps saying you're not doing this good this is very terrible acting you're not doing this right you need to put more emotion in this and it's because he's really not acting well but then all of a sudden he starts acting strange like he's possessed and like something comes over the guy and the one guy says that you know that's not good you were possessed there something weird happened to you you need to stay in this village and you need to figure out what's going on with you and it's sort of like him after this happens it deals with like some weird sort of possession stuff i don't know it's it's a very very strange movie but i honestly thought it was kind of cool though because it was all shot in africa and like settings i've never really saw you know film before and i and i i think there's like a big like, like type of these films that they make out there like these indie kind of sort of horror kind of movies that they make out in africa 
Christmas I had never saw before. And I think it had some of the people who were like the actual actors of some of these ones in this. But it was a pretty interesting one. But before we go, let's take a look here at the latest BAM boxes. And I have two different ones to show you guys. And I'll put a link below if you guys are interested in finding out about the BAM boxes. This one here is the two year anniversary box. The first thing in here is an autograph of um, the actor who voiced the Porg in the latest uh, Star Wars film. So that's pretty cool. They always have autographs in the BAM boxes. And here is a print, and I think I believe this is a yeah Stranger Things print here. So that's pretty cool. And they have a um, button here for um, the Walking Dead, and these two like replica props. I'm not sure which show these ones are from here. And I looked on this, and I don't know what this one was from for sure. But this is some of the other autographs that could be in here as well. And let's see, the next one here is a you know, uh, from the X-Files, a badge of Sully. That's kind of a cool, or Scully. That's kind of a cool thing there. I know I've seen some of these ones at conventions, these kind of badges. And then there is, let's see what the autographs are. First one here is a Black Panther print. And then see the autograph is, and well, this is another print here, a Harley Quinn print. And then it has a thing for the autograph who, you know, the, art, the artist who did this one. Let's see though. And then this one is the autograph. And then, I don't know, let's see who this one is. This is, um, this is from, oh, from Smallville, the actress from, um, uh, Laura Vanderroot Root from, uh, Smallville. So that's a pretty cool thing in here. And then there's this thing, which just like, sort of looks like a flash drive a little bit. This is a, like a, another thing from the Dark Matter props. I don't know if that's from anything specific or not. So that's pretty cool, guys. Like I said, guys, this is a little quick look at the latest BAM boxes. And I'll put a link below, too, if you guys are interested in checking them out. And also, I figured out what these are. And I thought that. This is Two-Face's two uh, coin, you know, from Batman Forever. So that's pretty cool. And this is the, the Skynet processor thing from uh, Terminator 2. So I did figure out what these two ones were. But anyway, though, guys, thanks again for watching subscribing. And I'll see you guys later.